Now then, folks, I hope that we've already established for everybody that's new to CSS and everything exactly what we're doing. We're basically styling boxes. So always remember when you're thinking about CSS, just remember a nice quote from The Simpsons. We just make boxes here. That's all we're doing. We're just making boxes. Even these things, these links could be considered boxes. So I just wanted to display that to you, and I hope it makes sense because we're going to just dive right into it. As I was saying before, typically when you make websites, you don't usually just make header, nav, asides, whatever. You can, but sometimes you need to reference them in specific manners. When it comes to CSS, there are two ways that you can reference elements. These we're going to call elements from now on, these things here. And the reason why we're going to call them elements is because that's pretty much what they're called. They're also called objects. I mean, this is, we'll wait for JavaScript before we go into that, but we'll call these elements for now, okay? There are two ways that you can reference elements specifically. One is by calling a class. So we can call this class head class. Now listen, naming conventions are up to you. You don't have to do underscores. You can do this. You can do camel case, you can do this, you can do, um, you know, well, don't do spaces. Spaces, if you do spaces, like if you were to put a space between this, if you were to say head and class like this, then it would look for a head and a class. This is how you would separate two different classes in one element. So you want to make sure that if you're talking about one specific class, you want to put it in one word. So we'll say head class. And I'll put underscore. You, can, you don't have to put underscore. That's just for signifying which one's which, and it keeps you from getting confused. That is one way. You can also use IDs. The head. All right? Okay. Now, when you go to the CSS page, or if you're doing the styling, as I pointed out before, in the head itself or in line or whatever, when you're actually doing the styling, the way you reference just the element itself, like for instance, in this case, header, you would just put header or nav. The way you reference a class is you would put a dot. And you would spell it correctly. Now, we can take all of this, copy it, get rid of this, Paste it in here, and it would be the same thing because we just told it that this header class is going to have one pick, solid black border, five family of Arial, yada, 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 margin right, 50 pixels. However, classes can be referenced multiple times in one page even and they can also change with every, with every mention of that class. So like what I mean, if we call it the class head class in this div type stuff, guess what happens? We get an Arial, we get a border, because within this class, the head class, we have called it not just once for the header, but once for this div. So now this div has this border. This div has this Arial font, and as you can see, it's different than this, and this div also has a margin right of 50 pixels. That's why it lines up here, because that's the class that we called. The ID, on the other hand, if you wanted to call an ID the head, you would do it with a pound sign, the head, right? If you were to copy-paste that, It doesn't change anything, but if you were to say in the practice, the head, we also want a margin left of 50 pixels, then this changes, but this doesn't because it doesn't have an ID of the head. You don't want to put the same ID in two elements. IDs are identifications. They are there specifically for one individual. I'll give you, I'll give you an instance. Now, with CSS, it doesn't really matter. It'll just keep, if you could just keep putting the head ID everywhere. But when you're doing stuff like JavaScript or anything that has any kind of functionality in a specific spot, 
IDs, then you want to assure yourself you don't reference them in more than one place. You can have different IDs for each place. We can ID this as the div. But if we were to be typing up JavaScript or something like that, and we needed an element with the ID of the head, you want to make sure that only one element has the head ID. So the way it works, a class is a grouping, right? So you can group things in a class. An ID is for just one thing. So again, it won't kill the styling per se if you put the same ID, but it's not good practice. You want to make sure that classes you can reuse. And just make sure that if there's a class that you want to reuse, make sure it's, it's, it's styling that you think would be specific to certain, like, like if you wanted a header everywhere, that had this border and everything, you want to make sure that you put all of the headers with the head class. So if we went to another and we went to, we want the table to have the same thing, we would go class equals head class, right? And then if we go to another, yeah, uh, tables are different, I'm sorry. Tables, we would have to go, we have to style the rows and everything. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 I forgot. I didn't incorporate it. <laughs> My fault. Let's, let's put that all in there. Let's go. We got to do the doc type. And let's just go like this. Let's just take that. I usually don't copy paste, but in this sense, I, I want to show you stuff. I don't want you to worry about this. So now you could see everywhere there's a table, there's, you know, Ariel, all that stuff. So you make sure that when you create classes, you just make sure that they're going to have designs, design features that you would reuse over and over again. And if you want to differentiate it, give it a different class name. Because, like I said, we can then make another class and we can call it um, head2. And we can say... Um, padding top five pixels. All right. So now we don't, we got to put that in there. Let's not put it in the table. Let's just put it in here. So I said uh, head two, right? So now we can go to the class area. And like I said, head two, separate with a space. So it knows it has two classes being referenced. And then there you see the padding on the top. But if we go to another, we didn't give it that because we didn't give it the, the head two class. But if we did, we would add a space in there, put head two, and bam. Now it's down those five pixels. So that's how you do different class references and ID references. Again, do not, by good practice alone, do not reference an ID twice, especially in the same page. Just classes. Just keep referencing classes. You can reference them all you want in the same page. It's not a big deal. It's not a bad convention. It's perfectly fine. People do it all the time. That's that's a way that, that makes it easier so you can have specific styling elements within the element. I didn't show you this, and I want to show you something in sp specifically. If you do want to comment things out, and by comment out, what that means is, I should have told you this with HTML. Comment out means sometimes you want to put instructions. Sometimes you want to just put like certain references so you know exactly what you're looking for, where you're going to find this, that, or the other thing. In HTML, and this is just for your, for your viewing pleasure and for your reference itself. If you want to comment something out, we open a tag, but we put an exclamation point. As you can see, it turned gray. And then we put dash, dash, this, and then you want to close it with dash, dash, a closing tag, right? And then in here you could say whatever the hell you want to type in here, it, it makes no difference, right? And then that, that's called commenting stuff out, commenting out. If you comment something out, it doesn't show up. If I took those away, it would. But, you know, if you're working with different people and you have to stop at a certain point, you can comment out something like start from here 
add the head to class down below. You know, and then you know, okay, I go back, and this way it doesn't affect this. You know, if you took those out, if you just took out this exclamation point, what you're going to get is, you're going to get that type, of, and you don't want that in the, in the website. But if you're like going back to something and you want to reference, you know, you, you just want to say, okay, oh yeah, I got to remember, or you can say something like this. You can say, this is the main page. So now people know when, they, when they're working on it with you, they go here, oh, that's the main page, okay. And it doesn't affect this. With CSS, the way that you open comment tags and close them is you do a slash or, yeah, slash star and then close it with star slash. And you say, this is the style sheet for the practice page, right? Now, if you wanted to go many lines, some people like to just keep typing shit, you would hit enter and you would do, what was it again? I think it's a, a, a star star. Well, I don't think you need to, I think you just keep, yeah, you just keep trying to type it in there. I'm thinking of something else. But anyway, that, that will not change anything in the CSS either. But as you can see here, I commented out, comment is shown. It's visible in the elements, but it's not visible here, okay? So again, if you want to communicate with one another through here, comments, comments. They have that for all the, we're going to go through that with all the other programming languages or whatever. Anyway, CSS, okay. So we have class references and we have ID references. Again, class references, you want to ensure that you do not, by any stretch of imagination, reuse IDs, especially on the same page, for good practice. CSS, it, it affects things, but it doesn't have to, it's not catastrophic for the most part. JavaScript or anything functional, yeah, it can be catastrophic. So stay in the practice of using classes for things you want to reference styles you want to reference over and over and over again. Or you can just keep retyping them based on div, h1, whatever. There's a problem though. If I were to get out the head class of this div, right? And I were to say, I didn't put in a class, right? And I were to say, um, div. I just type in div, right? And I go margin bottom 20 pixels because I looked at this page and I said to myself, I don't like all this being scrunched up. Let's put a margin bottom, bottom of 20 pixels on this page. Wherever this CSS page or style sheet is going to be referenced, it's going to reference every single div. If I had another div here. It's going to reference every, let, let's put another div in here. Let's say, okay, so on another, I just wanted to put in right below it, I put in a div. And I say, in this div, I say, Slovakia or whatever, right? If I were to go to another, Slovakia is, what did I say margin bottom, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, right, so if you look, now, Slovaka, I didn't want the go back link, let's say for the sake of argument, I didn't want the go back link to have a margin bottom of 20, but I referenced every single div, so every single div on all these pages. If I have a div here and I say div, don't forget that pictures are files too, right? If I were to say, if I were to put that in there with just the div tags, when I went to third, oh, I got to put it, I'm sorry. Got to reference the sheet first. Wherever, oh, shit. Let's put that back type in there. I think I don't have to do that right now. I think because I'm, I'm fully online now. Wherever, if, like I don't want, I'll, be, I'll go to this page and go, oh, wait a minute, how come this div has 20 margin? But I didn't want that because you just referenced this div. You, and now that every single page that 
has this practice CSS being referenced to it is going to put every div with margin bottom of 20. So the best way to do stuff like that is if you want just on this page to have that div do that thing, then you give it a class. Class equals div stuff. Class equals div stuff. And we'll do one more. Class equals div stuff. Okay. And now if we go to practice and instead of div, we go, don't forget how to reference a class, dot div stuff. Now, if we were to refresh, now that's all scrunched up again. That's all scrunched up again. But this has those 20 pixels. So that's a good, that's, that's how you would want to like separate and differ, differentiate because typically you wouldn't want to have a CSS page for every single or CSS. I could just say CSS because it's cascading style sheet, but you wouldn't want it for every single page. Like you wouldn't want a style sheet for this page. You wouldn't want a style sheet for the another page. You wouldn't want a style sheet for the third page. Like you want more or less one style sheet for every single page. And the best way to do that, or a couple that you could, so it's not huge and stacked with CSS, but you want to make sure that you don't have like 40 CSS pages. If you're making a site with 40 pages, you want to kind of limit that to about five or six style sheets. So it's good practice to get into the habit of putting classes in things. It's good practice to get in the habit of differentiating between one and another. This is a good way, and don't forget, like I said, and you could you could just keep putting classes in here. Another class, you could just keep putting classes in there, and it it'll continue to add whatever whatever you put into that class. Uh, I'll say border. No, we'll say um, background color. And we'll go aqua, all right? So wherever you see another class, you're gonna get a background color. So now the background color is aqua. And it won't be anywhere but wherever that class is. And if you wanna just throw that uh, another class, if you wanna just throw that into this div, you space another class. So you could just keep throwing classes in here and then you would have the same effect. And if you put in one of these classes that this one does, if you, if you put in, the, all that margin and border stuff and the Arial, it's not affecting this because this only has the another class class, as, whereas this has all those others with the padding and the margin and all that stuff. So I just, again, we're going to get into the styling. I promise you. We're not, <laughs> I want to make sure that you understand how each thing we put together is formatted. I want to make sure that you understand spacing, borders, margins, paddings, and all that. We'll go through some tricks first. And then I'll show you how to put it all together. Next time, we will focus on, well, I think I'll, I'll figure it out, I think. Because there are, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll do all that stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll go step by step. We'll do um, different tricks and everything. And I will really, when it comes to CSS, it's like, it's like, a very simplistic language with a whole lot of definitions and stuff and words and everything. And what I mean by that is there's not, there aren't that many elements you have to really, or many as, assets and aspects that it has that you really have to worry about in terms of remembering. Like there aren't, in ter, it's, it's the box itself and how to style the box. It's just all the different minutia, all the different tricks and trades and tips and tactics with CSS, all the different ways of referencing things. So we're going to get a little bit deeper into how you reference certain things like anchor tags, uh, links, things with elements within elements. We're going to get into that further tomorrow. I will see you then.